Hi, Jennifer. Great to be with you. Thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you so much for asking me. What an honor. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> for starters, how is life? Life is good. Life is full, but it's good. It's fulfilled. Um, but like anything, life is a journey, right? So mm-hmm. you never really get there. So that's what I love the most about this journey is that every day is a, a new day and it's a different day with different experiences and I love life. Yeah. <laughs> what is currently <laughs> filling your days right now? So you're a mother of how old's your daughter now? She turned one two weeks ago. Wow, birthday. Yeah, I can't believe it. This year has just flown by. Mm. So, um, yeah, look, we, we still have the three companies running. Um, so we have the Modern Day Woman Movement, which is a women's empowerment platform. Um, we run monthly events through there and it's a, it's a group of women, it's a membership organisation, but it was started um, to help women step outside their comfort zones, pursue their passions and really embrace multiple identities. Um, back when I started it in 2016, um, women were quite stereotyped back then and there wasn't a lot of women who um, were felt comfortable and it stemmed from my own journey as well of feeling like I don't really fit into a, a certain box. Um, and so I felt there a need to, to start a membership organisation. There was some wonderful um, women's networking groups around um, but I didn't feel like there was anything in the growth and empowerment space and particularly which wasn't financially driven. So um, I started the Modern Day Woman Movement and, and it's been growing from there and we have a now wonderful um, a group or, or collective of women here in, um, in Perth. Um, we do have a couple of members over in Sydney and Melbourne but um, that's something that we'll be growing this year with the launch of our, our new business, our new corporate business, which is Modern People. So Modern People, we are Australia's first purpose-driven recruitment, purpose coaching and human optimization company. Gosh, mm. it sounds like a bit of a mouthful, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I a love lot it. Of it. That's a good tagline. Three line. streams, three streams. <laughs> 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 and um, we're a social enterprise, so we reinvest our profits back into community and social causes, um, which leads to Ecolux events because that's our non-profit community-based events company. So we provide free wellness festivals, um, and community events on behalf of, of local councils um, to the public. So um, with Modern People, we're able to, to reinvest our profits back into providing this free education to, to people around WA. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's super inspiring. <laughs> and the uh, before we get into each of those um, incredible platforms, I'd love to get to know your journey a little bit more sure. of... What brought you into feeling inspired to create these platforms for women? What were you feeling in your own self of breaking through those bubbles of stereotype and mm. the the limitations that come with that, the fears or whatever? If, please share of your journey of what led yeah. you to starting that first platform for women, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've, look, I've had a number of, let's call them lightning moments in my life, um, epiphanies or um, where I've had certain realisations um, in myself. And um, I would say that each three of the companies have a very separate defining moment, which was the catalyst to why it's begun. Um, I'll start with the women's um, empowerment platform. So I guess I felt um, back, I have sort of felt for for many years really that I I didn't really fit in anywhere. You know, I I loved so, I I mean, I love life, but uh, that's quite a general statement, but there's so many facets to life that I loved. I mean, I I had a corporate business, um, a a HR and recruitment agency. We were national, had that for um, almost 15 years with a business partner. We had offices around the country, 150 contractors, very successful corporate business. And I loved that. You know, I I never really got to a stage where I, um, and a lot of the teachers and and the leaders that, and certainly that I I follow um, and coaches, you know, they have this moment where they they get burnt out by the corporate world. And and I never really got to that point. Um, But I felt like what I loved about having that business was 
being able to connect individuals to their dream career and, and having those those almost life coaching moments with them. You know, the interview wasn't just a, a clinical box ticking interview. It was a journey of their life and where they've come from and where they're headed and why. And I always ask people why. That was so important to me. It was something that was just innate inside me, like I'm naturally born cu- curious. So that to me, that connection with individuals, that's what drove me. So I, I loved what I did, but What I didn't love was the way the corporate world was so profit-driven and it was money-centric and they would choose profits over people and a lot of our clients were in that space. And so I was torn, you know, I was torn and and I I lived that life for, for, yeah, for a number of years. Um, And then through that I I went on a personal development journey. This was back in, I started back in 2013 and um, started then listening to Tony Robbins. um, That was the start of my journey with with personal development as well. Yes, I did listen to your podcast about that, yes. Um, Wayne Dyer, Uh um, Matt Mm -hmm. O'Grady, just, yes, there's so so many um, teachers and and I um, started, I thought, okay, there's got to be, there's got to be more. There's got to be a way that I can, um, I can can really change this and do something about it. Um, so I, I sort of went on that journey, and and I um, had another moment um, where I felt that. <sighs> Part of what I was doing, I, I listened to Brene Brown, and and um, one of her one of her teachings is walk in your story and own it, or walk outside your story and hustle for your worthiness. And that to me was a bit of a light bulb moment mm-hmm. because I thought that's what I'm doing. I am rather than walking in my story and owning who I am and I love different, I love the corporate world but then I loved the spiritual world as well and I felt the same actually with the yogi community that I didn't, um, you know, I loved going to the classes. I've done Vipassana. I went and did the silent um, retreat. But I, I, because I wasn't living their life, I felt that I wasn't worthy enough because, um, and I felt that I was being judged. Now, I may have been or I may not have been, but internally I felt that I was. And you probably were. Yeah. It goes on a lot. Like, yeah. It's, That's so refreshing it's, to hear that. Yeah. I wasn't crazy at the time. <laughs> no, well, there is a lot of the same, the same kind of trips. If you're not like fitting in with the club, so mm. to speak, and wearing the right clothes and smelling yeah. the right smell and That's right. speaking the right speak. Um, there's a lot of clickiness that goes on. And um, mm. I thought it was just a per thing, mm. but it's not. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Like if you're in, and that can be applied to pretty much any tradition, mm. you, you, like where, or any method or any kind of practice. There, if you go like deep enough into it, there'll be a pocket of dogma and um, clickiness. Yeah. In which it's this kind of toxic tribalism that yes. can be applied to anything. It can be applied to the whole to realm it. of yeah. cars and people in their cars. And if you don't have the right car, you get judged. Mm. It gets applied with spiritual, it's called spiritual materialism. And yes. um, a great teacher, Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, talked a lot about that. He's actually got a book called Spiritual Materialism, Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. And it's all about that. Yes. And um, sorry to cut you off. I think it's no, just really no, I, helpful I, I love for to people. Hear this. Because yeah. I think a lot of people actually do feel inadequate, uh, not perfect enough. Mm, just like not a, worthy not enough. Not worthy enough. And not I've worthy heard, enough to be there and yeah. be part of that group and be on that retreat mm-hmm. or be on – because I wasn't living and breathing it, you know, in every step of every yeah. part of my life. Right. Um, it, as in, you know, I wasn't, uh, that wasn't my career, for example, and it wasn't my entire lifestyle. It was parts of my lifestyle. Right. Um, and, but like that with every, with almost every area of life in the fitness industry as well, mm. because I've always been quite fit and mm. active and healthy and let's say the wellness world, which is different to the spiritual world, I felt the same thing mm. because I didn't have a full-time business in that, that I, I wasn't worthy enough um, to be part of that gang or that clique. And, and I did some research into it and and I, I studied a lot about the dichotomous nature of, of humankind, that all or nothing, right. black or white. Mm. And 
through that I, I sort of had a bit of a, a, another light bulb moment and I thought, well, maybe this is it. There's got to be other people like this, like me, um, that are out there that feel like, you know, they enjoy and appreciate the different parts of life and the different things that life have to offer and the different modalities and the different career paths and the different people. And um, so why do you have to choose? And so I just started going out and having these conversations with people in my network and I thought, well, you know, I've just, I want to do some research, some real, some practical research. And, and so I did that. I had a lot of um, uh, interviews and obviously in my business because I interview for a living, it was quite easy for me to just catch up with someone and then within sort of 10 or 15 minutes um, draw that information out of them. Um, and I found the more people I spoke to, the more, um, and particularly um, women but men as well, but that, that didn't feel like and they felt like they were being boxed in and stereotyped. And so that was really the catalyst for me to start the modern day woman movement was that, okay, let's bring you all together. And also because in, in my own personal life, let's say personal and social life, my networks and groups of friends were always very varied. You know, I had, um, you know, women obviously from the corporate world that I would associate with. I had um, friends that I grew up in school with. I had the yogi community. I had wellness community. Um, I had um, women in sport. Um, there was just, it was so broad. You know, I never, I, I just always saw the beauty. I, I, For me, what they did or what they were about, it was what the light that was in them. It was mm. that connection, that, that, um, that energy that I couldn't um, articulate or I couldn't really define, but I would just know energetically I'd meet someone and I'd either click with them or, or I wouldn't and there's very few people I didn't. Um, but I think that I, I wanted to, I saw though that within those different groups um, that there was a lot of judgment between them. And I thought, you know, if I brought you all together in a room, um, provided a, same, a safe place where you could all connect and... Um, and shared a, a story of vulnerability of myself. Um, and if you could see that same light that I saw in you, then maybe you wouldn't judge. And so I started doing that. And um, I had, through my network, I had different companies and, and businesses that um, I reached out to say, look, this is what I'm trying to do. You know, we need a space, we need catering. Are you, you know, are you on board? And, um, and they all said yes. And so we started having these, these quarterly sessions, which have now turned into monthly sessions. Um, so that, I, I guess, was really the, the catalyst for that particular um, empowerment group. But um, for modern people, for the corporate um, business, um, that really has been a journey for me through through really almost rejecting in a way that the only way that the corporate world can exist is by being profit-driven. Because I've never really innately, I've never deep down believed that, but... I didn't have any proof. I didn't have any, and and you know, it's all about um, outcomes and metrics and stats. So in that world, unless I could come up with something, I would just go by my intuition. But um, a movement started around the purpose space, and it started around um, companies like Apple being aspirational, and 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 people like Simon Sinek um, talking about your reasons for why, and adopting that to the corporate world and the big business, and. Um, when I read his um, his first book, you know, Find Your Why, um, that inspired me to start this journey of connecting what I, I already had within the corporate world and that business but m bringing purpose to it because there's no other recruitment, HR, purpose coaching, human optimization companies in Australia. And I thought, really? well, why not? Yeah, why? Just to me it's just, it makes perfect sense. Mm. So... Um, the year before last in 2018, I sold my um, my existing um, business and then I went through um, another personal development journey and, and went through the reason for, being, reason for being framework, which is the Ikigai, um, the ancient Japanese philosophy, which was actually discovered in, in the south of, of Japan in Okinawa, which has the highest uh, per capita of centenarians in the world. You know, it is not only just a blue zone, but it's the top of the blue zone. And so back in 2008, a group of psychologists went over, a psychiatrist and psychologist actually went over there and they did a study um, as to why that was the case. And they found that the Japanese lived and breathed their reason for being every day, which is essentially, if you think of four quadrants, it's combining what it is you love, so what it is obviously you're passionate about, what lights you up, what your skills are, so your talents or your gifts to the world, because 
what you love might not actually be what you're good at and what you're good at might not actually, you might not like doing it. Good to acknowledge that. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, And then thirdly, well, how can you be rewarded? So can you be paid for this? Can you turn it into a career or is it a a non-financial reward? Uh, Is it an intrinsic reward? Um, And then the fourth quadrant, and and to be honest, I, I lived most of my career in those three quadrants. And, you know, if you think of a lot of the, the teachers and leaders, the entrepreneurs out there, that you know, they're passionate about that what they do. They love it. You know, they stand up as CEOs and they drive, you know, uh, large companies and they're, so they love it. They're very skillful at it and they can be paid and reward, rewarded intrinsically and extrinsically from it. But why do they still feel empty? And I I did. Right. You know, I, in, in, that, in that HR world and then I... I further went on a journey and I um, started a a marketing company because my first degree that I did was actually marketing and communications at uni. So I went back and I thought, yep, that's what I want to do. This is, I'm going to leave HR and I'm going to do marketing and did that. And yes, very passionate about it. I love it and and good at it. And yes, um, lots of clients that, you know, reached out and said, yes, we want to use. So it was was a successful business. We had three staff here in Perth. Um, But then I still felt that sense of emptiness. And it was because I hadn't combined that fourth quadrant within your reason for being. And that is what the world needs. How can you make a difference? What is your impact? And a marketing business is fantastic and it's, but it's not, it's not changing status quo. It's not, it's not affecting movements. It's not, it's not helping the world. It's not, it's not caring and and repairing the world. And same with the HR company. It was it was great f- for that and connecting people with their careers, but they need this. What what more? You know, we need to do more than that. And so, modern people has been born from that. So our dream is to connect every person and every company to their unique purpose, and for them to be living and breathing their purpose in everyday life. Yeah, very inspiring. You touched upon vulnerability. Yes. What do you feel in your observations from your own journey and hearing people share? What are those most prevalent vulnerabilities mm. you find? I, I found that uh, we're like... In terms of someone yeah, like really stepping up and being in the flow of their purpose. You mm, know? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm. Great question. Um, I think it all stems down to, and look, there's many layers, right? You know, we're like an onion. And if you peel back the layers, you know, there's things like, you know, am I really um, body image Mm. or um, perception, judgment, um, validation, validation, will people, you know, am I doing this? Am I, you know, will people accept me? Will, you know, will I belong? All of these, you know, basic human needs, but when you drill down and the more and more that I've peeled those layers back, it all stems back to am I enough? Mm. That self, that self-worthiness, right. am I enough? And I think that, you know, that that still is an ongoing journey, I think, for most people. Myself, you know, I, I don't, I would never profess to say that I'm I'm ever at a point where I 100% of the time wholeheartedly feel that I'm worthy in every action that I have in a day, you know, I would be lying to myself. You know, those thoughts come and those thoughts go. And I think that's the key is to not hold on to them, is yes. to let them come and let them go. Mm. And just keep with your your rituals and your practices and, and what what fuels and lights that light and fire inside of you. Like w- what is that? And, mm. st- and stick to that, you know. So I think that whenever I'm feeling... Um, whenever I'm feeling vulnerable in a situation, um, since having Vienna, now I, I, I think about her and I think about, you know, just her, it's something simple like her face smiling at me and it could have been her smiling at me the day before. Or, um, and that, that to me, that just reignites my light mm. and it gets me through that particular situation. Or if I'm in a more um, rigid situation, maybe it's a more corporate type situation, then, um, you know, I'll think of, well, why am I there? What's the reason that I'm there? So yeah. think about that. Think about my why mm-hmm. and my purpose. And if I go back to that point, then I can get through that mm-hmm. moment of vulnerability. Yeah, beautifully put. I think... 
for some people as well, they get in their head too much in regards to the purpose thing and it's got to be this huge, huge humanitarian purpose and can overwhelm themselves in regards to purpose. And I think it's helpful for people to start mm, small, so to speak, like simplify, Mm. simplify and practice that art of listening, the art of connection. Yes. I get reminded of uh, a, a man in the Ramdas community who spent close to 10 years in renunciation and did the whole hippie thing of mm. going into spiritual communities and um, kind of extricating themselves out of corporate involvement and mm-hmm. out of financial responsibility, leaving all responsibility behind, which is what many, many seekers do. And then this man came back with, you know, beard and all the hippie clothes and and he was a financial broker but left that job, mm-hmm. came back and the lead manager of that um, institution saw him all bearded and hippie and it's like, you were one of the best financial brokers we had. Like, do, do you want to come back and work? So he he took the job and he shaved his beard and got his suit back on and – because he, he left the job out of frustration that mm. he lost his connection to self. And through that time of retreat and connecting to himself and journeying and investigating what's my joy, what's my purpose, he came back to that exact same job but flipped his perspective and his wow. attention and is no longer heavily identified with that role. And he's like, it's great. I get to hang out all day, connect with people, mm. have beautiful conversations. And the vehicle for that is financial brokering. I, you know, I lend the money. and But we get to connect. So it's a, yes. it's a, it's a yoga practice of sorts of connecting mm. and talking about life and helping people out. And just that flip of perspective of, I am not my role. I'm not my job. This is a vehicle. This is a platform for communication, for purpose. So for him, just that simple flip of like how he goes about his job and loosening that heavy kind of trance that many yes. of us get socialized into of you are your job yes. and that is who you are. That's right. That's your reason for being. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that, that's huge for people mm. to like – Again, especially in places like Perth where most of us do get socialized into that belief system of you are your job. Yes. You are your achievements. You are your money. And it can be a real hard thing to break through and shake to get deeper in touch with, holy shit, what's my actual purpose? Mm. When there's all those layers of the onion, like you said, of of the belief systems, of the Mm. stories, of the conditioning. So it seems like... it. For one, it's deep, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a absolutely, journey it is. To... And I feel like you almost need to. And I, mm. I, I see similarities in the story that you've just told, and 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 my journey of um, going from one extreme to another. You know, it's that dichotomous nature within us as well. And I think it's also a personality trait if you are a, a high achieving right. person, um, because you know you you renounce you know one um, a style or way of being, and then you got flip to the other only to realize that the beauty is in in balancing both and I, I think it's or, or meeting somewhere in the middle it's it's I, I feel like if you have that space and that clarity you can appreciate the beauty in both sides but I think when you're so in it it's like um and being here and it's you know and, and we're in the the stock exchange building that's where our office is and I love that because it's like they're like mice on on wheels around here you know everybody is just <laughs> you know running and but I feel like the world's changing which is quite a beautiful thing um certainly back in 2016 it was a it was a different world I think in 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 the, the last you know four um five years mm. it's changed incredibly more than it's probably changed in 20 years yeah. in terms of, of that self-awareness piece. And I feel that the more companies that we're reaching out to now, they are absolutely purpose-driven at all their, their purpose for profit models. Um, you know, they have a, a social initiatives and community initiatives that they support. And so they're just yearning for more and more. They're already on that journey. And I think it's like an individual, right? You know, you start on that journey and, you know, we we have a joke within our, um, uh, our community that if you, you know, don't start unless you're willing to, to really get 
give it your all because it's better that you don't start. You know, we, right. we come across a lot of personalities and, and a lot of, of different people that they are so closed in their, their way of being and they're so it, it's it's probably safer for them if they're not really ready to commit to just stay to stay where they are and then when they want that when they are seeking more then to open up because once you start it's it's insatiable you know mm. like that that i mean we're all students of life and and that 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 yearning to grow and to learn and to and to to help more and to open your heart more and let more light in and and be surrounded by those people like it's just it's it's um it's just it's it doesn't end yeah. so <laughs> so i feel like once you um uh, yeah once you can connect into that then that's where that's the beauty in this journey of life and and we're seeing that more and more um, in the corporate world and also um, in the different social circuit so, social circles mm-hmm. and communities so yeah. yeah and I'm really enjoying the again the vulnerability piece and the transparency because mm-hmm. it would be easy to put someone like yourself on a kind of pedestal of she's got her shit together you know and which which you do to make everything flow. You do, but you also shit falls Some apart days. every now and then as well. You drop <laughs> like the jar morning. of honey. <laughs> so, so I was late. <laughs> I, I said to the girls at the front, I was like, I just feel like my my, my whole life is like. I'm living like 15 minutes behind <laughs> yeah. the time schedule of my You're life. Literally 15 minutes I'm late. Literally, not too it's bad. So, um, so uh, <laughs> I think I need to get some coaching around that too. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so it's impo- Nobody has their shit together no. all the time. No, that's a complete myth. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, things, you know what, and I think it, it's not so much about, there's a there's a book that I'm reading a, as well in, mm. in Japanese philosophy about kintsugi, which is um, like the, the imperfection mm. or the perfection and the imperfection and their, their way of being. And um, they believe that one of the greatest myths is, is you know, in, in life we're also always in this pursuit of happiness. I mean, it's one of the American values, right? The pursuit of happiness. Um, and they believe that when you're constantly trying to chase this pursuit, this this state of happiness, because happiness is just a, it's a temporary state. It comes and it goes. Um, that it's unrealistic to chase that because we are always seeking that we'll be in a happy state 100% of the time. And that's unachievable. Whereas they believe if we pursue a state of being strong, strong in who we are, then we can face life's adversities when they come to us. And I, I feel that that's, that's really something that I've lived by. It's that, um, yes, naturally, personality-wise, I'm an optimist uh, and I'm a happy person. But at the end of the day, if you aren't resilient and strong and not um, resilient in a in a forced or a tense way, but resilient just in a natural, that let it come, being in your flow state, mm-hmm. you know, letting it come. And so when things happen, you just let them come and you let them go. So this morning I was late and I... <laughs> I was making my chai, just finished a webinar and the honey just smashed everywhere. And um, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, and then I went straight into laughing. I mean, that's my default. Was it a full I just, it was a full jar. So first of all, I was like, oh, I got that from the markets. And it's like that organic, like delicious honey. Like, <laughs> no, it wasn't actually. It was Rose Banksia, ah. which I've never had before. And she recommended it. And, mm. and I mean, it was it's divine. Good honey. Oh. And then it went everywhere and I thought, well, this is going to set me back <laughs> 15 minutes. That would be so tricky to clean up. <laughs> oh, well, so I just looked at the glass, smash it, and I just started laughing because you have to, you know, just roll with the Did punches. Did you have a moment you know? of the tension? Ne- yes. Free- yes. The knee jerk was. Yeah. So the knee jerk always is with me. Yeah. So it just, it's a second of, um, ah, shit. And then a breath. And then a breath yeah. and then laughter. So because um, for me, I would love to say that I just, my knee-jerk reactions are just like roses and candy and yeah. smiling and lovely, but that just isn't who I am. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah. so the initial will come out and then, but it's for me, it's how quickly you turn that mm. around. And if that initial is just a, a release, you know, so it's a word, so shit, for example, um, or it's a very quick thought then, you know, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. It's I think that in the past and where I've worked very, very hard um, um, with my different coaches and my spiritual teachers in, in is where I used to 
um, allow that to then manifest into my next interaction. Right. So whether or not it's with, um, if I was at work, the people around me, if I was at home, my, my husband or my family, my, you know, so um, that's where in the past it has been quite dangerous for me. So I, um, I've i worked on, on mindfulness techniques, mm. like taking a deep breath, stopping, bringing laughter in, those things, very, very simple and, and I still do them now, I still practice them now mm. and I, I have been practicing them for years and I probably will continue to practice them because that's something that you're talking about, you know, patterning, you know, that was 30 years of my life of patterning into mm-hmm. a certain way. Um, and so, of course, it's going to take time to to unwind that and unpattern that. So um, just be kind. That's, yeah, be kind to yourself yeah. and not, not allow that to really manifest and flow into the rest of your day because that's another thing. If I, if I did that and I was, then I'd get so hard on myself mm. that, oh, Gosh, why I'm I'm so tense and now I'm late and oh god, I'll probably and then I just this. oh no, oh. yeah, and it would just snowball. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, whereas if you just take a deep breath and you just laugh it off, mm. then hey, the rest of the day, the world is your oyster. Yeah, mm. it's a vital point as as mundane and just simple and mm. all that it is. It, it, it's powerful. That yeah. that ability to shift from that fight or flight, which is valid. Yeah. It's for our survival. Yes. You know, you didn't want your baby stomping all over, crawling all over broken glass. You yes. know, that's survival. But fight or flight kicks in and then that that mindfulness to shift that into the parasympathetic nervous system. Yes. Whew, like we can all do that. But for many people, they are in that sympathetic nervous system, that fight mm. or flight, like most of the time. And mm. it, it, it can be a real vicious snowball effect that then translates into people's sleep and then their yes. dreams and then the next day. And it re- for a lot of people, especially with technology now, it mm. takes a real conscious effort to bring a breath to it, bring some laughter to it, some sound to it, some vulnerability to it. I cry to it, like even a big old cry every now and then if you're really under the pump because the phone thing, because a lot of people have a really stressful day Mm. and that stress is just compounding, compounding, compounding. And then maybe even if they're doing healthy stuff, Mm. often if people are in that fight or flight state, they'll do something seemingly health healthy but mm. in a stressful way yes. like pumping music and which is all well and good but if it's again and again and again yes it can be like that elastic band just getting pulled 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 absolutely and then they're laying in their bed with their phone more like stimulation mm. and stress so it it really is especially as things get more and more distracting and mm. big in the world it, it really does require that mindfulness to go all right Back to the breath, back to a laugh. Yes. Put the phone down. Just simple things to, especially yes. if you're as busy as someone like you. You know, you got to be really proactive with all that. Huh? Oh yeah, and look for that. That to me is just a, it's it's ongoing and mm. it's daily. You know, especially with um, now the launch of, of of modern people and that's just taking off and it's and it is days are full and um, I'll often catch myself feeling quite wound up. Um, I mean, for me, I, I run most days um, and that for me is my release. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would go through periods where exactly what you said, that elastic band, I would run in like that tension. It's like the, the my, as soon as my feet are pounding the pavement, that's, you know, that is my, my release. Mm-hmm. But um, I would also then get into stages in, in my life and I'm, I'm, I'm always managing this where um, I would just run too much or too far and um, my, I would just exhaust my adrenal glands um, or I'd become too thin. Um, so, you know, I, I have to really watch that. And so um, some of the, the simple, simple um, techniques that I have um, adopted is um, – I no longer run with any sort of device like a, you know, watch or a tracker or anything like that. Um, So I'm not, um, I guess, aware of beats per minute and kilometres and steps and things like that, things like metrics which create Mm. tension in my mind. Um, So I I just 
I just go for a run and I just, I, sometimes it's with music, um, sometimes it's with silence. I use that as my active meditation mm-hmm. time. So um, I'll often um, listen to say the, the rustles in the leaves and I'll just focus on the leaves. So as I'm running, I just listen to the leaves. Other times I'll just, I'll be listening to my footsteps um, and other times it'll be more visual. So I'll just start looking at things and, and looking around and, and looking at the tops of the houses or or the trees or um, even just dead right in front of me and I just get into to a zone, almost mm. like a, um, a trance. So it, I try and mix it up because I'm a person that does like variety. Mm. So um, I try and mix it. So it's, it's always something different and I find that in a lot of these concepts and these um, frameworks and um, my ideas have come from from being in those states. And it's like I, as soon as I get back um, to the car, I just quickly get out the phone and start jotting everything down in notes because I've just had these waves of inspirations mm. and I plan out my whole talks and everything just in that run, but I have to quickly write it all down because yeah. I don't have anything to at the time. Um, but I really feel like that's a, 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 um, a strong flow state for me is when I'm in that zone. And, um, and you know, I don't know. I mean, s- sometimes I'm running and it's very slow. I'm, I'm almost just shuffling. Other times it's a little more energetic. And again, it just uh, depends on how my body's feeling, how yeah. I'm feeling. Um, but that's something I do need to watch. And that's still, um, for me, um, I think an ongoing, an ongoing journey, mm. an ongoing practice. Yeah, that pointing out of not watching the metrics, I think is actually Mm. quite helpful for people. I think many of us are getting inundated with social media likes. Yes. Uh, How many steps we've walked, how many calories we've burned, how like are we in ketosis? (laughs) Yeah, yes. um, Yes. I mean, some people are watching it all, which can be good to to gain a certain amount of of, uh, autonomy in one's life and have a bit of control but I think it can also be taken too far yes. and can create some pathologies there. And even eating disorders, you know, like um, this ketosis thing. Like I'm a, I'm a fan of the keto thing, mm-hmm. but some people are taking it really, really neurotically, like more than I think any other diet fad I've seen. Mm. And they're wearing the um, the the ketosis reading and they're watching oh, their ketosis okay. reading constantly, wow. making sure they're in ketosis constantly. Mm. They're watching their calorie thing, their heart heart rate thing. And it's quite, it can just feel the stress, can yeah. just feel it building so up so the cortisol. so much tension around it, yeah. And especially, I mean, when you're in a state of ketosis, especially mm. if you're doing fasting with it, which is intentionally stressing the body out. Mm. It's a lot of stress. And actually our friend, uh, mutual friend, Sarah Hopkins brought that up. She was yes. uh, my last guest on the episode and she brought that up, that yeah. like people are under so much stress just through getting through life. Mm. The last thing they need is to add on to that by making sure they're in ketosis, making sure like yes. which is, Add, add stress. That's the point of it. That's so it's right. good to be smart about that and tune into um, what, what's the Japanese methodology you keep referring to? Ikigai. I have the reason heard for of that. being. It, yeah. sounds, it sounds quite similar to like the Tao and, and yes. tu- yeah, tuning into the flow. And Absolutely. There's a time for getting after it and running quick. And yes. there's a time for a slow, peaceful walk. And there's a time to be in the middle and just going with that ebb and flow and listening to what's optimum for today, yes. this moment. It could be different this afternoon. Right now it's stormy and cloudy right here. The, the skies could open up and be sunny today. Like going, It's kind of like the weather, tuning into that, that yes. flow of phenomena, just passing and going. Yeah, I want to look into that. It sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, mm. no, it is. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful philosophy. And, and, um, and yeah, we're really excited to, mm. to be bringing it into some non-traditional <laughs> type, type areas like the corporate world and, and, yeah. to, and, and making it accessible to, to individuals. So I do um, love what you're you know, we the just, corporate scene. It's super inspiring. Well done, huh? Thank it's you. It's very cool. And what you're bringing into your platforms, I love how truly holistic it is, like truly comprehensive. And it does seem like everything you're feeding off, you're naturally bringing in, which is quite organic. Um, but to have that platform for people to really explore all these different modalities is really unique. It's great. Yeah, I think so. And I, I just, it really comes down to um, 
to really living, I guess, the, the best possible life and reaching your own full potential, yeah. but also making that impact and, and what you can, what, what mark will you leave behind? You know, how will you affect change and make a difference? So I think, you know, there's, there's so many different ways to do that. Um, and there's some amazing companies and coaches and teachers out there leading the way in that that space. So the more, the better, I think, yeah. you know, like let's all jump on on this um, on this train and, and let's, you know, let's let's change the world together. Why not? Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> For like, think of a listener that is vibing off what we're talking about, what yeah. you're talking about, yet they're, re- they're in a rut. They're mm. in a stagnant rut. They truly don't have the energy to get to a course, get to a class physically, even though that you know they can, they know they yeah. can, but truly for some just people- Just not quite there Just yet. not quite there yeah. yet. Yeah. Can you, like, I mean, we've got so much information information at our fingertips that are listening to this. Um, mm. We've got courses and audio books galore. What would be your recommendation for someone that, that's really in a rut and they just need to start stoking that fire a little? Yeah. I, I would say um, on a personal level, just start surrounding yourself more around what it is that you want to attract in. So if you feel like, and surrounding yourself doesn't have to be in person if it's not, if you're not feeling that maybe you've got the energy or the want or maybe the the confidence just isn't there yet, that's okay. We've all been there. And I feel like just listening, listening to more podcasts, doing some Google searches, you know, something so simple like Googling, finding purpose, finding happiness. Um, you know, uh, there's, there is so much material out there. There's so, um, uh, there's so, you can read, you can just and surround yourself. And, and even something so simple, like when you go down to the supermarket and you see, Make, make it a little, I guess, game. I mean, I love games. <laughs> I'm a big child at heart. Make it a little game at everyone you walk past. Just look up and smile at them. Maybe just start with one. Maybe when you go to the shops, it might just be one person. You're just going to smile at one person today. And then the next time you go down to the shops, you might smile at two or three baby steps Mm. and something so simple like that. And then you can evolve to then saying hello to people. You know, I I make it my um, little game that when I'm on my runs that everyone that I run past, I say hello to or good morning to, even if I'm puffed, puffed, whatever it is. And the amount of people that just stop in their tracks and they always, I I give them a fright. You know, it's not, it's not very, it's just, (laughs) it's, I'm probably the first person that said hello or good morning to them all day. I think that is. You know, such. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, but. yeah. No, I was just going to say something so simple like yeah. that, but yet we don't do it. That's right. why they get such a shock when somebody does say hello. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like just doing little things like that mm. can just allow more light in your life, more happiness, more love, more support. Um, you know, th- little things like that don't cost anything, and you can just just start incorporating them in everyday life. Um, and on a professional level, there's um, there's many online programs that you can do, which you don't have to leave your own house. Um, we've got two, which, you know, seven days and 10 days, which are just self-paced, um, one hour a day. You can do them from your bedroom, your living room, wherever you like, and you don't have to um, see or speak to anyone. You just watch our videos and you do the activities. But, you know, there's so many companies that are doing amazing things like that. Um, you know, ours are specifically around purpose, but there's many around um, that, you know, are about happiness or about love or or connection or community. There's just this. So just, just get on your phone or your um, computer and start Googling and mm. start speaking to people, start smiling, saying hello, those little things. Yeah, beautiful. Your life is very full. <laughs> I would love to hear how like some practical ways and even mystical and imaginative ways that you balance out a given day. Ooh. Start practical and then, yeah. I mean, you spoke just then about the kind of childish ways, which is beautiful too, <laughs> merging the two. Yeah, we got to keep that little inner child and that playful, imaginative. But how do you balance it all? Oh, well, 
balance that elusive word. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I don't feel like balance is a destination. I always feel like balance is just a state of being in a moment. And um, so for me, what that means is that balance is different on on different days. So whatever the energy on the day brings, the priority and the task brings, um, you know, my priorities always, of course, number one is my family, is my daughter and my husband. um, And then business is second. So I feel like whatever those priorities are, um, that's where the energy goes and that's how I balance um, that particular day. And, you know, there are still days now where I, um, and regularly, especially with the, the launch of of, um, of the new company that um, I, I feel like, oh God, I get to the end of the day and I think, wow, um, I didn't get to do, I didn't achieve these things. I didn't get to get back to these people, that people. Um But then I try and just adopt simple practices like, well, when that garage door goes up and I go into the house to just let it all out and I leave it in the garage. Mm. And so when I walk into that house, it is just full love, light, happy energy for my daughter and that's it. And, you know, and it's it's something that sometimes I consciously have to sit in my car and just take a couple of really deep breaths because it has been a very tense day and a lot of things out of, out of my control have happened um, and not for the betterment of what we're trying to achieve. Um, so I feel that, yeah, there's a couple of really deep breaths um, in the car and just um, and just getting back to to being present in that moment so then when I walk in the door because in the past um, I have absolutely been that person that just just bullet a gate runs in this and it just that energy transfers and and it's created tension with all of those around me and so that's something that through my personal development journey um, back in 2013 that I that's that's was the number one on my list is to 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 really work through that and get to the bottom of why I was why I was behaving in that way but where that was coming from you know what was underlying underneath all of that and sort of unpack that and just get to a state of where um it's okay that self-acceptance I think is probably the best way of describing it is that um and being present and again simple mindfulness techniques and I feel I feel um that mindfulness is such a, it's been a buzzword for so many years now and I feel like it's almost created a little bit of a negative connotation to it because it has been such a, and I feel like in a way um, it's doing the opposite of what its intention is Mm. because um, people just have this stigma now, like when, you know, especially when we're speaking to a lot of um, individuals and also companies about mindfulness programs and so forth, they they always, they just roll their eyes. Oh, we've done mindfulness. Yes, we've done mindfulness. But then- then they'll display behaviours in that one hour or two hour interaction that we have with them, which they're clearly not mindful or present at mm. all because I'm talking to them and they're on their phones and, huh. they're there and then they're talking to, and you, you can just see that they're not present at all because they, they'll ask um, – they'll ask a question of something that I've just <laughs> spoken about five <laughs> minutes ago. But yet they, they say, oh, no, we've done mindfulness. We don't want to do that anymore. Right. So I feel like um, there's just – it really is something like maybe we need to invent a new word for it. Well, I, I, ha- <laughs> I have heard some people try to flip exactly what you're speaking of, the the negative culmination of, of what mindfulness has become uh, – and calling it mindlessness, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of like the opposite pendulum shift. Uh, so I hear you on that. I mean, similar with yoga, yeah. you know, like the, the mainstreaming of something and the, yeah, the mainstreaming of something and, mm. and, and experiences of it and perceptions of it just warp because what it is. Yeah. So it's no, it's no surprise. Yeah. That's for sure. It's just become so popular and so mainstream that a lot of people that maybe even have done mindfulness for years haven't actually been practicing mm-hmm. mindfulness just because there's so many different takes on it, similar similar to yoga, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, different word. I mean, same with like God, that's making a comeback. The word God for kind of got chucked out for a while because yeah. – uh, 
of the negative um, repercussions of what people thought was God and the dogma with mm. it. That's making a return. Maybe it needs to be like, you got to give it a break for 10 uh, years yeah, or something that's like right. that. Like that's God. Right. <laughs> but as long as we're all practicing those techniques, though, yes. that's important. Don't let, no, go, that, don't let go of that's the, powerful. the doing, like, you know. <laughs> so you're driving home. Hmm. Even the practical thing of like, okay, if you're stressed and you're driving home or commuting home, like making a choice of what you listen to or don't even listen to. Exactly. Like rather than just plugging into the noisiest radio station. That's right. Uh, maybe put on an audio book or a podcast then or nothing. Exactly. And just breathe deep or make some sound or sing or laugh or that choice. I mean, that, however long you drive for mm. could be a beautiful contemplation or meditation or relaxation. And then you pull up to your driveway and you stop for a few breaths. Yes. And then that thing of just dedicating, like having a bit of intention before you walk into the house. Absolutely. Of, May I be really present? May I listen? And yes. Yeah. Actually pay attention because that is causing a lot of dysfunction right now. I hear it again mm. and again of people complaining about their lover not being present and they get home from work, haven't seen them all day, haven't seen them for a week and they're just on their phone constantly mm. or on the PlayStation constantly or watching TV constantly. Yeah, It's a loving discipline that's really, really important if we're wanting to nourish ourselves and our mm. relationships. So yes. I think that's bang on and really helpful that you brought that up. Mm, yeah, and I think, and, and also just being just being kind to ourselves again that, mm -hmm. um, you know, balance isn't something, um, it's, it's not something that we're ever going to achieve. You know, it's this it's that that um, achieving that perfect state of being, it doesn't exist. You know, well, so it's just, it's, you know, it's what, what, it, what it needs to be on that day, yeah. but then it's also being present in that mm -hmm. to appreciate and have gratitude yeah. um, for, for what, what you have, you know, like I, um, I am at, um, at work or in meetings or, um, during the day. So I, I don't get to see my daughter for, mm. for a lot of the day. Um, but you know, and I could feel guilty about that. I could allow those feelings of guilt to come in and, and of course I miss her and I think about her, but, um, you know, I, I know that I'm filling my days with things which are purposeful mm -hmm. and which are having impact. And, you know, I want her to grow up and, and um, look at me and be proud to have me as a mother. And, and hopefully um, things that I'm learning and, and, um, and as I'm growing, I'm, I'm teaching her and, and I want her to grow into the version of herself that, that she wants to and she wants to become um, using myself and all the others around her as, a, as, as, as mentors and, and role models. So I feel like, um, yeah, a lot of women have that guilt um, and I still speak to them and, and you know, I'll even, I, I, was, I was at um, uh, an event the other night and um, one of the women said to me and she's got a daughter around the this, this similar age and she said, oh, yeah, you know, you, you've been out quite a lot this week. Um, have you missed her? And, and I said, oh, um, of course I miss her. I miss her every day. Um, and I said, but I don't really think about it like that. And I said, well, um, she's she's asleep. So I, you know, I've gone out to um, a networking function after she's um, gone to sleep. So I've spent the afternoon with her and we had some beautiful time together. And, um, you know, like she fell asleep and I was like ru rubbing her bunny on her face because <laughs> she's got this little, um, this little comforter toy and she was laughing. And that's the last memory that I have of her before she fell asleep. And that's really beautiful. So I don't know, but... Um, and, and, and I, I took that at, at the time of, of her, um, I guess, projecting because perhaps that's how she was feeling and so she was projecting that onto me. But um, I guess my response to that is um, as long as the time that you spend with them is, is present and it's meaningful and it's full of love, then really that's, you know, that to me is, is, is the, the epiphany of, yeah. of, or the epitome of, of that balance, yeah. right, is because... Um, Every moment I'm with her, I'm with her. Um, and when I'm away from her, I'm away from her, but she's safe. Mm. You know, she's yeah. safe and she's with people that we know and we love. And and so, you know, she's and she's an individual herself, even at one, you know. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah, I just feel like mothers have such a a guilt that they really, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, it just doesn't serve them at yeah. all. But yet they just, they're in this pattern that they, they're unsure how to break it. Right. Yeah, it's an old pattern mm. and it's very new for women to be emerging in a lifestyle like what you live. It's very new. 
if we look at it evolutionary. So yeah. it's no wonder why maybe it's confusing to some people. Yeah. Um, challenging in one's own life when they're, you know, trying to live a more empowered life or, mm. you know, create some some more passionate, purposeful ways of living. Yeah. But they're feeling that kind of uh, magnetism back to old old ways. Um, it's no surprise. I mean, it's very new. Mm. But there's a powerful force, uh, uh, especially with people like you and all the platforms you're creating that are popping up all around the world to yes. support this emergence, but still is very new. Yeah. Um, so just observing that in a very objective, like uh, big picture way, mm. it doesn't surprise me why um, some people find it challenging yeah. and maybe some people would even judge it. Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Get and back I, home. What are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And I guess at the end of the day, it's 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 really having that own um, strength yeah. in what in, in who you are yes, and what you're doing and totally. what you're achieve, achieving and knowing. And I don't have the guilt because I know that when I'm with her, that time is magical. Yeah. And um, – I uh, and I know this because I, I, I look. I know she's only one, but she, she, you know, she's a happy girl. And when I leave, she waves goodbye to me. She doesn't cry when I leave. And I know that's probably going to change when she gets <laughs> into a toddler. But I, I feel like maybe that's because it's a it's um, something that she's learned. It's it's a behaviour. It's a lifestyle. It's probably, a, um, oh. it's an energy that she's learned. You know, like uh, the moment I walk in, it's always just um, so much laughter and mm. love. And you know, my whole world in in the house revolves around her. Yeah. You know, beautiful. and so I, I feel like that when I'm there, she has me completely. Mm. But when I'm not there, I'm not there. But when she's old enough to understand, she'll understand mm. why I'm not there. And I, I look, I can only hope because I'm certainly not in control of this that she'll um, understand that and that she'll she'll uh, respect and she'll love that. Yeah. You know, that'll be aspirational to her. And if it's not, well, then you know, I'm going to have to reevaluate at that time because she is my number one. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, certainly with what I'm doing, it's it's all it's all malleable. You know, it's all we're all on a on a, on a journey and mm -hmm. we're all learning together. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, if yeah. you know, if it happens. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Really inspiring. And back to that elusive word balance. <laughs> I think um there's a common attempt with personal development, with spiritual practice to create that unattainable constantly positive, constantly enlightened, constantly loving state, which isn't balanced. No. I mean, it's a total false yeah. uh, perception of balance. So it does feel to me... It's something um, else that starts with B. It's something, <laughs> what is it, bullshit? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget um, a dear friend who was trying all this stuff, all the stuff we're talking about, mm. you know quote unquote mindfulness and um, you know the secret and all, when all that stuff was, was really buzzy like what the bleep and the secret and everyone was getting really hyped up on positive thinking and the uh, vision board which is all good stuff yeah it's all good of stuff course, of but course. if it's yeah. not balanced with getting honest with our neuroses it can turn into a really toxic positivity absolutely and I think that's super common. I, I do feel things are balancing out after that kind of peak of a lot of that um, uh, hyped up kind of new age stuff uh, that came through like almost 10 years ago now, quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. It does feel like through actually a lot of letdown, like a lot of people are like whew, getting worn out, yes, burnt out by trying to stay positive. Absolutely. And eventually... Nature will balance us out, whether we like it or not. And and I think the thing as well is that that they're trying to be positive, like positivity. Um, well, I believe it should come from within. It should come from your heart. So if you're not genuinely feeling positive in a certain moment, then sometimes by forcing that tension, you're doing the opposite of right. what what the intention yes. is with positivity. Exactly. And so I feel like there's there's a, a lot of people that do do that and um, 
and it's about letting go. Mm. And that's something I, I certainly have um, have had to learn over over the years, and I'm still learning. Is to just when when it's time to just let go, right. and it's okay to be, you know, it's okay to be exhausted, and it's okay to be. Look, I'll, I'll give you a personal example. Only a few weeks ago, um, we had an intense couple of days where it was just, uh, we had events, we had workshops, we had client meetings, pitches. It was just, it was insane. And in that two days, um, I think we got to about four o'clock in the afternoon and I hadn't had anything to eat. I was, I think I had a green tea in the morning and I was just running on empty and I was just, my frontal lobe was firing Mm. for. And I got home and I just collapsed. Like I literally could not get up off the couch. And um, my husband was home and he had to go and pick Vienna up. And um, I ca- and I just started crying. I just bawled my eyes out. Mm. And he's like, "What's wrong with you?" Like, and he he knew. He said, "You've." He knew that the couple of days that I had had. And he said, "Had you eat? Have you eaten today?" And I was like, I haven't even had a drink of water. Like mm. it was just one of those days. And, you know, I have to take responsibility that I, you know, I, I, I planned those, I accepted those meetings. I planned now even if a few things ran over, I'm, I'm still responsible for my own time and my own. So, you know, there, there were moments that perhaps in hindsight I could have just drawn a line and a boundary, but, you know, innately I'm also a people pleaser. So I, it, I yeah, struggle same. with saying no. So I just <laughs> yeah. say yes, yes, yes. And, um, and I just, I wasn't in my power in those two days. I wasn't in that, that full, that strong um, sense of self that I've worked really hard um, you know, for the last, since 2013 to, to get. So I sort of, I, I, I felt like I had let myself down because I know this stuff, right? Like I, you know, we, we teach this stuff, we know it and we, and, and we've been practicing it. I have these rituals and I have all these things. And for those two days, I just didn't adhere to any of them. I didn't, I just, it was like, I felt like I was back, you know, um, yeah, 10 years ago. And, um, I got really uh, well. First of all, I, I had I, I thought it was some sort of adrenal collapse breakdown, and and um, then uh, it actually manifested into my body. To then um, I, I started to get a fever, and so um, Chris took my temperature, and he was like, "Yeah, wow, you're like thirty eight point seven. Um, okay, well we'll monitor that. Oh, wow, you're thirty nine. And, and I started shivering. I was I, I and I and I thought, oh, I'm coming down with something. It must be maybe that's what it is. What what's happening to me? Um, and I went to sleep at eight o'clock. Um, and I woke up at seven o'clock the next morning and I don't usually sleep that long. Um, but what happened is I'd pushed myself over the limit, went into exhaustion, but I woke up the next day and I didn't have a a fever or cold. It wasn't anything. Mm. Um, I woke up completely fine, like bouncing off the walls again. And, um, I just had this realization that, wow, you know, even with all of these amazing things I'm doing and all these rituals and every morning I have chlorella and spirulina Mm. and green juices and I do all this, that, you know what, I'm just human. And sometimes we have these moments where we just lose it all. And that's okay. I mean, I lay on the couch for two hours, just crying at nothing, uh, you know, well, it wasn't nothing. I was exhausted, but just there was so much emotion in me coming out. And, you know, that's why it's so important to have those connections and have those people around you. Because um, another realisation that I had was that, you know, when when it's all said and done, when you're lying on that, that deathbed, who are the people that are going to be there and around you? Mm. And if you don't, if you don't be that person of, with love and have that light shining within you to attract those people like-minded or the same people, sorry, to you, then that's, that's at the end of the day, life, that's all it is. It's the relationships we have and the experiences. And that was just a really rem- a strong reminder for me only just recently that, wow, that's so important. This, you know, it's so important. I'm so fortunate to have this amazing man that I can come home to that when I've just lost it on the couch that he just picks up the slack and he he did everything with Vienna and and then he looked after me and basically carried me upstairs and put me to bed mm. and um, in the morning then had <laughs> breakfast everything all ready for me because he knew that wow this is if I don't look after my health and myself that 
So it's that's beautiful. Yeah, Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and I, I, I just think that's so important that we mm-hmm. all, um, we all just realize that we're just human. Yeah, and even um, the impermanence thing. I think it's valuable even contemplating that every now and then. Mm. You know, I think it can really help people cut through the bullshit and step up again and again. The mm. contemplation of our impermanence, like it's not such a big deal. Something that feels like such a big deal, like something that feels incredibly vulnerable and scary and yeah. all the stories, I can't do this, I can't do that. The contemplation of impermanence can really, at first, it scares the shit out of people. Mm. Holy shit, I could end at any time. Like it, it's, there's a lot of denial around that, especially mm. in our culture. But to really dive into it, pretty much as far as I've seen, it always does invigorate a a thriving, uh, a new vitality for life mm. and a deeper appreciation for those we love and even, even a deeper like resiliency. Mm. Speaking of resilience, like when we can really honor how actually fragile we are yeah. that we could just die now, you yeah. know, and it's incredibly fragile. It seems to, in the letting go that you also touched upon, let go into that deep mm. resilience. Yes. It's like a letting go that all of your endeavors could end today. Just like that. Yeah. We could t- die today and that can invigorate like, appreciate this body, appreciate those loved ones, like say hello to that checkout person, you know, all those little things that you've been speaking of. The every now and then the contemplation of impermanence. I like to do it even before going to sleep because sleep is such a mystery, you know, it's such a mystery. (laughs) It is, isn't it? And like it's kind of like a mini death in a way, you know, it's like (laughs) we can practice the art of, the art of dying, really. <laughs> of like letting go into the mystery, like into the void. And then you wake up and it's a it's a I think that can help us keep the that childish nature that you were speaking of, mm-hmm. you know? That, That's true. That, that thriving imagination. Because a lot of people aren't sleeping like mm. deep enough. Yes. So they're on their phone until that last, like until yes. they close their eyes and their circuitry is all confused. But like really laying there and practicing the art of letting go, like in Shavasana, that that deep, undistracted letting go can reveal so much mm. and all of that type of stuff. Like if, if we've been overdoing it yes. before we do fully hit that wall, which is fine. Like the amount of times I've hit the wall, like what you described mm. and it being really a precious moment mm. of insight and reevaluating and refining Absolutely. how I go about living. I've had really bad chronic fatigue, um, a while ago now, over 10 years ago, I kind of like came out the other side and recovered from it. But that couple years of really bad mm. adrenal fatigue was great. It was shit at the time. But in retrospect, I needed that time of like, oh, done, like deep yes. in the darkness and fatigued. And it took a long time to rebuild, mm. pushed it that hard. And it was a precious time. So in those moments when like you're overwhelmed and exhausted and you just need to cry, if you really let yourself cry, really yeah, let yourself get exhausted. Let it out, yes. Even if you don't have a beautiful partner to pick up the pieces for you, yeah. which I didn't at that time. Like um, it, was, it was all by myself and mm. just – and that can be beautiful as well. Of course mm. it's nice when you've got your beloved to uh, help you out and, and check in on you. Mm. But even those moments of like – aloneness can be really potent and powerful oh, I as well. Agreed. And I, I think sometimes it's, there's more transformation in those times mm-hmm. because whilst I, I, I looked at the gratitude in having, you know, Chris there, but mm. if he wasn't there, then I would have to look within myself. Right. So then not be dependent on an external source yeah. for that care and look within. So um, that was still a, a, a life-changing moment for me only a few weeks ago. But I think that um, if I was alone, I would have had probably an even deeper life-changing True. moment. Yeah. Um, so because it would have it would have taken more strength and courage to 
get myself up and get through that. Mm. So... Yeah. I've had you for quite a while. We've hit the over an hour mark. Is there anything <laughs> else you want to mention to our listeners? Any upcoming events or anything you want to share before um, we wrap it up? Well, I mean, if you're in Perth, we've got um, a couple of festivals coming up. So I'm not sure when this... Um, in a couple this weeks. A couple of weeks. Yeah, okay. Early yeah. March. Okay. Great. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we've got the Vitality Festival on the eighth of March and Scarborough Amphitheatre, um, and we've got um, uh, on the twenty seventh of April the Subi Wellness Festival, um, which is across the road from Patterson Stadium. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would love to see you down there. Free community events. Um, we uh, touch on all the pillars of vitality and wellness from movement to nutrition, to stillness, mindset. Um, so come on down. We've got some amazing speakers and presenters. Um, the Vitality um, Festival, we're breaking an Australian record for the most amount of people doing a sunrise swim. Beautiful. So that's at 6 a.m. And then the guys have got the ice baths coming down, um, breathing workshops. Um, so there's quite a bit happening there. So that's pretty cool. And and if you're interested in finding your purpose and that's something that really speaks to and you feel like maybe that's the time now for you to to have some, um, some self-reflection and introspection time, then... Um, We've got our two online courses, which are seven days and 10 days, and they're just one hour a day, self-paced in your own time. So you can be working full time and have a family. And when everyone's gone to sleep, you can just sit there for an hour every day for, for seven days and um, and go through this Reason for Being framework. We ask um, quite a few different questions and there's activities because it's one of those things where you don't necessarily know, you know, your first response, if you ask someone, well, what is it that you love or what are your skills? Sometimes the first response isn't actually the most meaningful one. You have to peel those onion layers back a few and that's what our questions are, are designed. Um, they've been developed with our in-house psychologists to, to really get to the root of what Beautiful. your reason for being is. Great. Yeah. I'll leave links below to all that. that Thank that's you. That's amazing. Thank you for your beautiful work and your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm it's so been inspired great. after talking to yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> it's been beautiful. I really appreciate it, Jennifer. Much love to your family. Thank you yeah. and yours too. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.